So the impetus for this project is wanting to learn how to do angled sliding dovetails. Every year, Mark Spagnolo from the Wood Whisperer hosts a building challenge called Woodworkers Fighting Cancer, and this year's build-off was a dog bowl stand. So I decided to try to incorporate angled sliding dovetails to join the legs to the body of the stand. So here you see me laying out a couple reference lines just so I can reference the piece with when I'm setting the table saw blades. What I discovered is you really only need to set your blade once as far as the angle goes. I'm using an 8 degree angle dovetail bit in my router table and so all you do is set your blade to that angle and leave it there. This is really a process about work holding, not so much uh, changing anything. The first two cuts to make are the, the end cuts, which establish the angle that your dovetail is at and the angle that it sits on the floor, so it's fairly important that they be coplanar with each other. Here I'm setting up to cut the uh, end of the dovetail or the reference point where the blade will s or the um, shoulder of the, of the dovetail will sit. And in order to get the correct angles, I need to switch the fence to the other side of the blade. Still not changing the angle of the blade, but changing the effect of cutting angle on the workpiece. Here I'm uh, attaching a sacrificial backer to my tenoning jig. Uh, if I do this again in the future, I think I'll build a dedicated angle jig that I references off my table saw fence rather than using the tenoning jig, which worked. However, there was a little bit of flex in the longer piece, which led to some inaccuracies. It's a little hard to wrap your head around here, but at this point you're effectively cutting a 16 degree angle to make the 8 degree dovetail at an 8 degree angle. One of the reasons I'm going to build a dedicated jig next time is there's no effective way to reference um, the tenoning jig cutting the other side. Um, and so I ended up holding it up against the fence and using the base flat against the table saw in order to make that cut, which wasn't particularly safe, which is why I didn't show doing it here. So I intentionally cut the uh, tail of the dovetail a little bit wider than my bit. That way I could sneak up on the fit using the router table and the fence rather than messing around with the table saw. This is just much simpler. A couple micro adjustments of a 32nd of an inch or so and it fit really well.
here I'm just laying out some circles. Obviously those are the food bowls. So I'm going to use a jigsaw and cut out the hole that the bowl will just drop in. If I'm uh, fancy and, and pretentious like Mark from the Wood Whisperer is, I might put some magnets in just to hold the bowls there. Uh, his dogs are a little bit bigger than mine though, so I don't think I'll bother. Jigsaw. Here I'm just using a rasp to take off some of the rough edges really quick. little bit of mayonnaise spread on the wood works really well as a glue bit of gentle persuasion And there we go. Finished. Look at those beautiful tight dovetails. And here's what really happens when you use gentle persuasion. A little bit too tight, I think. Went together fine during the dry fit. Good thing glue fixes all problems. Most problems anyway. <coughs> well, that worked well, eh? Thanks to the Spagnolos for supporting cancer research and thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more.